Hi, I'm Adam with Fun. We're here behind the bumpers with Team 3494 Quadrangles. Captain at their last event on the Finalist Alliance and already making it to finals at this event, their unique strategy and robustness has proven that they are a threat to be reckoned with. Next up on Behind the Bumpers, we'll look at their unique strategy, how their intake has been incredibly precise and allowed them to score the amp and trap, and the other little things that make them just such a good robot on the field. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay, so starting with your strategy, you've chosen to give up speaker scoring altogether. How has that worked out and why? So it's been working out great for us this season. Um, the main reason that we did that is we really looked at what Indiana has looked like in the past. We looked at games like 2020, like 2017, like 2022, where we've had phenomenal speaker bots here in Indiana, but have kind of lacked those other elements of the game, like that gear game, for example, in 2017. And we saw, that, we saw the strategy this year. We saw the game and we saw that without an amp bot, we're losing half the points. Every amplified speaker note is two and a half times as powerful as a normal speaker note. So we wanted to make sure that as many of those notes were amplified as possible. And we knew that the only way that we could do that was to make sure that we were scoring as many as possible and the best amp on Indiana. In addition, one of the things that we were trying to do this year is to make sure that we do perform well at early competitions. We have historically been one or two slots away from going to Worlds based on district points. Um, last year, for example, we were just below. So we wanted to make sure that we had those district points early on in those competitions that we generally don't perform so well on. So the way that we, we decided to do that is to make sure that we can track. Looking at that ensemble ranking point this year, you can only get that if you have three robots climbed, um, a harmony, uh, sorry. Uh, three robots climbed harmony, uh, with two harmony together, um, two harmony spotlight and, another, and a park, or you can have one robot that can trap and one other climb. And since we weren't convinced that a lot of robots were going to be able to climb this year, we decided that we are going to take that trap option. We're going to make sure that we get that ensemble ranking point every single time and try our best to secure that ranking point. Uh, so that was, that's the main baseline of our strategy and it has worked out really well for us. We've been very consistent in doing that. Uh, we are one of the best amp bots in Indiana as well as one of the best trap bots here. Nice, and so then moving on to your scoring mechanism, you've been incredibly quick every time you approach the amp and you've been incredibly quick every time you go up to trap. What makes it score quite so well? Um, so one of the main, so to go over the mechanical parts of the robot really quickly, um, mainly we've got a max blind intake right here driven by a uh, uh, Neo 550 on an ultra planetary. And that is directly driven geared to an, uh, an absolute encoder right here so that we have absolute position to make sure that any skip in this belt, because it can skip and we want it to skip so that if something if something slips, it's not going to be the intake breaking, it's going to be the belt skipping. Um, but we still maintain that position even if it does. Um, moving down to the intake itself, uh, we've got pretty simple two, two roller wheels driven off another Neo 550 through an ultra planetary, picks up right from the ground. We slide in, we got that bevel on the corner right there, picks it right up, hits right here, pulls it in. And one of the main things that has helped us make sure that that is consistent, that lining up, that grabbing that, that note is uh, auto-aligned to the notes this year. So Sean can talk a little more about that. Yeah, so one of the things that's made us really fast when approaching the source and grabbing a note is being able to automatically align to that note so the drivers don't have to uh, think about it as much. Now, the way we do this is we have this bottom line light here. And what this bottom light is, bottom line light is, is it's running a neural network on a Google Coral. So it detects where the note is in a particular shot, as you can see on the shuffleboard right there. And then it will turn the robot to face that note. The driver can then hold a button, and when that button is enabled, it will turn towards the note and become a robot oriented. So the driver can just hold forward and it will curve straight into the note, wherever that may be. What this means is that we can really quickly go into the source, grab the note, and be right out with it without having to uh, fiddle around with it for, for too long like some other teams. Nice. So then you talked a lot about the, the, the robustness. Your robot is not breaking down, it's staying very sturdy. What is quite keeping it so well together and what's making it so quick to fix any errors that come your way? Yeah. So one of the main things that we that we realized this year is that this intake is right outside of our robot. It is super, super prone to getting hit from the side, running into the stage. 
So we wanted to make sure that that was robust. We did a lot of finite element analysis where we assign stresses and analyze how, it ha how they act on our robot, how they act on our intake to make sure that it wasn't going to break. But when we made sure it's not going to break, that just pushes th those forces elsewhere. So specifically that pushes it to this main elevator that, our, that this entire arm rests on. And because we don't want that to break more than we don't want our intake to break, we decided to design in a failure point. Um, and that comes right here in the form of a flexible joint. So what that flexible joint does, and you can see it exists uh, right here on the, on, the, uh, on the arm, allows us to get, take a little bit of side load and it bends with it and then bends back into position. So if you go back into ground intake, you can see that when it is down here, if that takes that side load, what it forces it into is a bumper and the bumper is taking that side, that, that load and not anything else on our robot. And that's where we want it to be. That's where we know that our robot is strong enough to take that load and keep anything from breaking. And that has been phenomenal with, for us. Uh, we've had almost no issues on our intake this year in terms of anything breaking. The only thing that has is a couple of pulleys that, are, that exist on here um, from some skipping that happens with the intake. And those are also easily replaceable. I would say one of the main things that made us really bust that when we do break, we can easily switch stuff out. So we can switch out all the pulleys that cause it to skip in a few screws. Uh, we can even pull off the swerve drive modules in a few screws so that if something like what happened in finals last week happens, we can just pull a swerve mod, slot a new one in. It's already zeroed and we should be good. And the whole arm because of the flexi joint, it's really easily detachable. And we can put it back on if we need to and fix whatever we need, but whatever broke. Nice. So then looking at your, your trap mechanism, you said a lot of it's automated. Uh, we see that routine. You could kind of go through the programming side, how you managed to make it quite so quick. Yeah. So generally how the uh, trapping routine works is that at any given point, we know where we are on the field because we have odometry on the robot and we have this top limelight that's looking for April tags on the field and relocalizing the odometry based on what it sees. So when we want to trap, what we can do is the driver has a button. And when we hold that button, the robot will automatically drive to whatever trap we're trying to align to. So currently, it's the left trap April tag. So if I hold the left trap button, it'll align to the, uh, to the correct point in the trap and we'll be right in the middle of it. We can then hold the sequence button. It'll move the climber, move the robot forward, move backward, and be staged on, on the stage, on the chain, ready to trap. There's then one last button done by the operator, which pulls the climber up and forces the intake into the trap so we can then easily outtake without having to go through all the manual sequence and all the finickiness that comes with it. We can line up, we can do the routine, and it makes it so much faster than just doing all of it manually. Another portion of that, another one of those automated features that we have during our, in our trap routine is automatic down climb. So we determined this year, since we are an amp and trap only bot, if we end up on an alliance where people, where we don't have two speaker bots, where we don't have people who can shoot into the speaker effectively, we still needed a way to earn some of those points. Um, and one of the ways that we decided that we could do that is to make sure that we could downcline and do multiple traps per match. So you can show the downcline routine where it pulls down, still holds the uh, still holds the chain in, so we can pull back and then drop the drop the arm so and then as soon as we're there, we can pull up off the, off the chain and go and try and get another trap so we can get those 15 points from trap. And at this point, after the automation, we can trap in approximately 20 seconds um, if we have a good view of the April tag. And that means that we can get three traps in just over a minute 10, a minute 20. Thank you for explaining your robot to us and good luck for the rest of your season. One final time, this is 3494, the Quadrangles. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.